<laughs> I love your kitty. I love my kitty more, but I love your kitty. So we want to talk a little bit about Miracle before we get started. Yeah, Miracle was here, but then she got hungry, and now she's passed the fuck out at the top of the stairs. So we won't be seeing Miracle tonight. Um, she's She was pretty good today. She was giving me lots of attitude and told me off when I tried. Like, we're helping her do things because she's lost, like, half her muscle mass. And she can't really stand still. Like, she sways and she's very shaky. So, like, we are carrying her up and down the stairs and helping her in and out of the bed. And today she's not having it. She's like, no, fuck you. I can get off the bed by myself. I'm going to get into my window bed. I'm going to jump off of stuff. And I'm like, please don't do that. You're very frail. And yeah. I'm getting told off. So we're feeling our oats today. But some days are good. Some days are bad, you know? For for those of you who, who aren't aware, this week Miracle got diagnosed with lymphoma. So. My little kid is very sick. But uh, like yesterday, not so good. Yesterday she was really listless. Today she's feeling pretty good. So that's kind of how it's going to be. And when the bad days outweigh the good days, and then, you know. Yeah. But you're going to make her, god damn it, Grady. <laughs> Grady's like, I feel great. You fucking upstaging little shit. I attack the darkness. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mi Miracle, we just going to make her comfy. For... Yeah, we, I mean, we pretty much spoil the shit out of her anyway, but now we're just spoiling her more. So, so we keep trying, like, she she's never eats table food because she has so many food allergies. And at this point, we're like, fuck, she's dying. We'll let her eat whatever she wants. Dan keeps trying to give her, like, pieces of chicken and stuff. And she's like, no, I just want my kibble. Like, she's so used to not getting table food that now she won't even eat it. She's like, no, I just want my kibble. So... We're trying to spoil her more, and she kind of won't let us. Although she does let us carry her around, and she is enjoying that. What do you want? <laughs> what? I want all the attention. What is it, Grady? You're talking about another cat, and that's bullshit. His, his, he was like, for most of the night, he's all like... <sighs> Then just before the bit, he's running around and jumping and 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 smacking into stuff and trying to drown his 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 rat and. Yeah, you don't need to worry about that. By the way, cats sleep like fourteen hours a day. Like that's totally normal. Cats have the best fucking life ever because they sleep all day and they have human slaves to do shit for them. I mean, the price is they have to lick their own butts, but. Whatever, I'll take that trade, man. Like mostly, they have fantastic fucking lives. I'm I'm just I'm used to whenever I make any noise, him exploding into another room, and now <laughs> he's just sort of like, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. See, I've forgotten that other people's cats can hear things because we have friends in town who would watch Miracle when we we'd go away, and I went over there, and they have two cats, beautiful tuxedo cats, and like. I forget that other cats can hear, so I'll do something and the cats react. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they do that because Miracle, like you could be you could be playing symbols right in her face and she did not give a fuck. She doesn't what know. Are you, what do you get out from under there? So I've actually kind of forgotten that other cats do things when you make sounds like Pussy, mother. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come forth. Oh, you little furry shit. Hello, Grady. Hello. You're so fluffy. Look at your belly. Get off the cable, Grady. Thank human, you. Human, human, put me down. I'm trying to I'm trying I'm trying to fuck shit up here. I'm trying to run around being a little shit. Don't run yeah, around. Yeah, trying to attack the darkness. <sighs> you were a goofy little thing. You were a goofy little thing. Are you going to behave, please? You were so good tonight. Nope. Nope. All right. Go play. Go play. There you go. So. And I just heard, 
Dan and I are both relentless cat people, so I'm sure there will be more cats in our future. Um, Miracle's a special needs cat, so she has to kind of be the only cat in town. So, especially now, like, we're, we're just looking out for her, trying to make her happy. Fun! <laughs> He's so happy. Oh, oh, good. Look how high that got. Let's just do this for half an hour. Let's just watch Grady fuck shit up. Do you remember when Bridget used to do this in the background of my shot and you yep. were like, what the fuck is wrong with that cat? Now you get it. No, I don't get it. I don't understand. But do you remember when Bridget would just like zoom through the back of my shot or jump the fuck up on my chair yes. and bring the whole show to a screeching halt? Now yes. you understand. I don't understand. It's I never understood. It's just because it's happening to me doesn't mean I understand it. Anyway. So, it's time for the live bit. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for what we'll we like to call, oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? And, uh, Jesus Christ, do we, do we, what, what, how many times, do we have a counter for this one? Because I think we're going to start, this is going to start getting its own counter at this point. Um. Um. Oh, oh, oh. I think we got a kitty delivery. Hey. God damn it. Why am, I, why am I awake? There you go. Hi, Dan. Hello, Miracle. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh. Oh, <laughs> let's not fall off the tower, okay? There we go. No, there we go. And let's not jump. No Please no jumping. No, our, our flying days are behind us, sweetie girl. Okay. Break a hip or something. Oh, look at that tail going. She's mad. He woke her up. <laughs> Please no jumping. Just lay down. Okay, you can glare at Dan. Just don't jump. So, yeah. So, we... we if there isn't a counter for this type of thing yet, there's there's gonna be. There should be. Yeah, I already sent you that. I already cut and pasted that. This is how the fuck does this keep happening? We have somebody that did on Tumblr, like actually counted up how many of each different kind of story we've had, which is an amazing effort, by the way. I forget who did it, but wow. Naked. So somebody does know how many of these we've had. Naked Iowa man rescued from chimney of recycling company. Firefighters have rescued a soot-covered naked man from a chimney at a recycling company in Carroll. Carroll Redemption Center owner Brad Sapp told the Daily Times Herald he was sorting cans Tuesday when he heard someone whisper, quote, get out of here. At Sapp's wife, at home, Sapp's wife, Carrie mocked him for being afraid of ghosts. But Wednesday morning, Carrie heard someone in the chimney cry out for help and say, quote, I was playing hide and seek with my cousin. Don't call the cops. Why were you playing hide and seek naked? In a chimney. What were you hiding? Yeah, and why? That's not a good hiding place. I mean, it's a great hiding place, actually, because nobody fucking found you, but... It's not a smart hiding place. Police and firefighters eventually hammered a hole in the chimney before taking the man out through the bottom. He was <gasps> naked. Oh, I'm sorry. He was naked, although his clothes were inside the chimney. So wait, he actually took his clothes off, put them in the chimney, and then went down after them. Or somehow got them off while he was trapped in there. In the chimney. This is like Edgar Allan Poe slash fic. Oh, what the fuck? Dude, okay. It is, it is never a good idea 
unless you are a trained professional, to get anywhere inside of a chimney. No, you don't belong in there. You don't know what you're doing. That's where the fire comes from. Uh, well, no, technically that's where the smoke goes from the fire, oh, but it's yeah. still a pretty tight fit and the air is not good for you. I, I... It's, it's not a smart place to be. I was playing hide and seek with my cousin. Yeah. Okay, are we done? Um, does anyone buy that for a second? Were you playing hide the sausage with your cousin? No, but... Uh, does... <laughs> Jay Walker, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, Jim 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 Was it strip hide and seek? Jim like every time you get found, you have to take off an article of clothing? My clothes will come off when I enter the flu. Chim chim chim. <laughs> oh, that was awful. Uh. Is a recycling plant have a chimney? Because they burn shit. They burn the stuff that can't be recycled. There's a okay. This is my 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 cousin Brian in Ireland has this question because Ireland is very environmentally friendly country, unlike America where anything that can't be effectively recycled at a recycling plant does get burned and turned into noxious fumes. Okay, yeah. don't jump. Don't jump. I'll put you down. There we go. Bye-bye. Go see Dan. So, yeah, we're, we're... We're burning horrible, noxious shit. That's why. At the recycling plant. I can't think of a... No, I about... But how I, did he get... Like, did he work there? No. Why are you playing? Okay, uh, let's just go with the hide and seek story. Why are you playing hide and seek at the recycling plant? How old was this person? It's a full grown man. How did you get your clothes off in there? Talent. Yeah. And if you could get your clothes off in there, how come you couldn't get your ass out? Maybe that's what he was trying to get out. Maybe he thought the thickness of the clothes was going to make the difference. I was about to say I could not think of a worse place to be naked. But we've done this show so long. That's not true anymore. Apparently every place is a good place to I'm be just, naked. I'm just thinking about rock grinding on my junk. And yeah, no, I don't care what junk you got. I don't care which set you came with. You don't want soot there for certain. Like oh, no. the kind of junk I have, I don't want soot and ashes near. And if it, you still, that's big old infection waiting to happen. That's the, thinking the uh, kind of junk you got. You don't want gravelly textures near. I mean, they, I guarantee you somebody on the Internet is into that and likes to be jerked off with sandpaper. I promise you that's a thing. <laughs> I look forward to your letters. Oh, I don't want to. That is a bad promise. That is a bad promise. I promise you somebody's into that. And it's a bad We got people that get off on popping balloons. Like, somebody's into that. That was your favorite fucking thing ever. That was a great story. That was a great episode. That was that's like in our top ten. So, so have you ever uh, been to the zoo and you see a sign that says "Don't feed the bears" or anything? Yeah. Um, there's a zoo in North Dakota that's going to have to amend their sign to read "Don't feed yourself to the bears." Dan and says he just looked, and that's definitely a thing. Where did you look? <laughs> Stop. Dan, get off the internet. Get off the internet this second. So what I'll be tweeting some links out if, if, if any of you are curious. Don't help. Stop helping. You're not helping. One of two men who broke into a zoo in North Dakota got his hand bitten by a brown bear after sticking his arm through the bars of the animal's enclosure. Don't do that. Police in Minot say they responded late on Saturday to a report that David Shepard, 21, came to emergency hospital room saying he had been attacked by a bear. 
said an investigation showed that Shepard and Cody Cage, 23, climbed the fence of the Roosevelt Park Zoo after it closed and were walking around the grounds when they came upon the bear enclosure. Shepard stuck his arm through the bars of the enclosure, aiming to entice one of the bears to come closer, and the bear bit his right hand. Because it's a bear. Someone's reminding me, I, I have an idiot ex who very publicly wanted to fight a bear. I'm sure you remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Like went looking for a bear on the hiking trail so he could fight it. No. 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 Wait, is that your thing? Is that why you just Googled that and know how to find it so quickly? Stop with the sandpaper. God damn it. Stop. Am I am I not doing it right? Okay. Yay. Mm. The two men who police say he came up with that answer real quick. Can, can we get off one side stupid and focus on a different stupid? Okay. We have so much stupid. The two men who police say were under the influence of alcohol at the time of the incident are facing felony trespassing charges. I mean, you got to be pretty junk to think you can just reach out and pet the bear. Nice bear. Friendly bear. No, not friendly bear. They are, I have said this so many times, it is still true. Bears are living furry tanks. Yeah, they're machines of death covered in fur. Nine feet tall, up to a thousand pounds, and they have non-retractable six-inch claws. And teeth. And they're like Hodor strong. Oh, don't say Hodor. Yeah, sorry. Don't, don't, don't. Like, don't, don't fuck too with soon. bear. Too soon. It, perhaps you have noticed that zoos that have a petting zoo area, the bears aren't in the petting zoo. No. Because you shouldn't pet them. Because the bears would eat the petting zoo. Because they will eat you and everything else in that petting zoo. Because... Back it off. Those are not a fucking with it animal. You can pet the llamas. You can pet llamas them. are very nice. Well, no, they'll spit on you. They're not going to eat you. No, they're, 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 they're dicks, but they're not going to eat you. Bears are going to fucking eat you. I once, ro I once rode a giant tortoise at a petting zoo. Like a tortoise with like a shell that was like four feet by five foot. They'd let you have like a ride on his back. It was a very slow ride. <laughs> but you could sit on the little... And I don't know if the tortoise the was aware. You can't ride the bear. You're, you're, yeah. No, ride... You can't ride the bear. The, 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 I feel sorry for the bear. Because it's the middle of the night. All of a sudden, two drunk idiots come up and start going, Hey, bear, bear. Hey, bear, bear. I'd want to bite the motherfucker, too. Yeah. I might bite your hand off if you do that to me. You're sleeping some other... Somebody, hey, hey, hey. Hey, I, I might bite your fucking I would hand. fucking bite you. I, I'm, I'm with the bear on this one. Yeah. Leave the poor bear alone. I think the bear was probably performing a public service. Oh. So, moving along. There is like a common ritual. I don't know how much of it's urban myth. I don't know how much of it's presented to us via TV and whatnot. But it's always the disposing of the ex's stuff. And... Mm. And the ritual often includes you get a big box, you take it downstairs, and there's the, the big barrel, you throw it all in, you throw in the lighter fluid, and you burn it, and you have the dramatic scene and the Dawson's Creek music, and you just sort of stand there, and the camera pans out on the sunset. Has anybody ever done that? Well. Oh. I just donated anything left behind to fucking Goodwill. Yes, and... No. Man burned ex fiance stuff in the driveway. Man burned a pile of his ex fiance's property in a driveway, and the fire damaged a nearby garage. Heat and the fire damaged the vinyl siding of the nearby garage. Fire crews quickly extinguished the fire. Two dogs were home at the time, unaffected. They say Robert Noble intentionally set fire to the belongings. Noble was arrested and cited on suspicion of third degree arson. According to the Essex Police, it cited Noble on suspicion of stalking the police department and cited him on suspicion of unlawful mischief in relation to investigations conducted the same day. 
You can't just set stuff on fire. It's not allowed. You can if it's your stuff. No, not if it's... You can't just set other people's stuff on fire. Well, this was one of those... Even still, you can't just start burning shit. You have to do it in a certain manner, in a certain way. There are laws. You can't just say... See, like, not to be a libertarian about it, but I feel like if it's your own shit, you should be able to burn your own shit as long as it's not noxious. You can't just set fire, Sarah. But you can't burn other people's stuff. You, That's okay. So, sometimes, you, especially, in, this happened in uh, Essex. I did donate a couple of an ex's t-shirts to Goodwill that I knew were his favorites and that he'd come back for. And he did. I told him which Goodwill to find him at. Okay. Yeah, that's not so bad. That's not but so I bad. I set them on fire. You didn't set them on fire. You're not, you can't, there are rules. We have rules for the fire. Especially when you're so stupid that you're accidentally setting fire to somebody else's shit. Well, it wasn't accidental. Oh, okay. I the see garage was accidental. Yeah, you, you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna set shit on fire, try to not be such an idiot about it. Yeah, be careful with that shit. And especially places like I when I when I uh, I've lived in South Carolina and I know out west they've been having a lot of this. There are places where you can't burn shit, period, because if you do, everything will catch on fire. Yeah. Because we fucked As up the Americans learn once a summer. We fucked some up idiot the fucking does it. This is why I keep telling Dan he's not allowed to teach my nephew how to set shit on fire. Because my nephew is 10. And therefore not responsible enough to have power over fire. Dan, don't do that! He wants to teach him how to build bombs! Like, he's 10! Blow up the whole fucking neighborhood! Dan, Jesus Christ, you're okay, worse than me. Clean himself. You're fucking worse than me, Dan! Don't put fire near my hair! <laughs> That's... Knock this! Jesus Christ, Dan! Men have died for less. Don't put fire near my hair. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, no, I think Pat would really enjoy learning how to make a basic pipe bomb. And I'm like, no. You're trying to get your kid, the kid on my show, for fuck's sake. This is not how that, no, don't do that. See? Even When even I'm saying it's a bad idea, it's a really fucking bad idea. And I have some bad ideas all the fucking time. And Nash's cousin made, like, a flamethrower out of a peeing He-Man action figure. Dude. Hey. <sighs> so. Don't set shit on fire. Let's move on from the right. fire starter to the fire not starters. He expects a few basic things from a fire department. You expect them to show up. When you call, you expect them to have a certain sense of decorum, and you expect them to take their job seriously. And put out your fire. You do not expect them to make fake 911 calls just so they can ride on the fire engine. No! Yes! Logan Township, Pennsylvania. Four volunteer firefighters are facing charges after police say they called to report fake emergencies. Logan Township police say Dustin Beckwith, Eric Beckwith, Daniel Johnson, and Edward Perino are charged with calling 911 to report false fires for the thrill of riding in a fire truck. My dad was a volunteer fireman. I can tell you that he would have kicked these guys' asses. It's... <laughs> he, kicked, he kicked the asses of the guys in his company for fucking around with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> they were shooting each other with the fire extinguisher. This is... This scares the shit out of me. This is not okay. Because when I think of firefighters, I think of people who have to run into a burning building 
Fully knowing they may not come the fuck back out. Yeah. Fully knowing that they're running into a burning building. You know, solid, dependable, straight worthy, risk their fucking life to save yours. Not, I will ride in a fire truck and woo woo, woo woo. That is not who I want showing up to put out the fucking fire. <laughs> no, it's not. No, I that's was... really bad. Because what if there really was a fire while you were out on your joyride? You're not available now, are you? You fucking asshole. No. Yeah, exactly, buddy. Even yeah. Grady, Grady says that's bullshit. Grady knows what's up. I, I think he says that's bull. I don't know. One of, although volunteer firefighters do go through extensive training. One of the guys who was under my dad when he was a captain told me that on his first fire, he kind of froze up and got very nervous and said to my dad, like, I don't know what to do. And my dad's answer, being the consummate professional that he was, was, fuck, shoot water at it. <laughs> Fuck, shoot water out. <laughs> that was my dad's Yoda-like guidance for a young firefighter. Well, he, to be fair, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's not and, wrong. And the guy who is now a captain in the apartment was like, that was good advice. <laughs> Step one, fuck, shoot, fall, shoot water at it. There you go. <laughs> Step one to being a firefighter, shoot water at the fire. The fire engine's not a toy. No. It's not a toy. You could get a toy fire engine. Yes. They make them. You can go to the Toys R Us and get you a fire engine and go back to your apartment and just go woo, 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 woo all day long. Yeah. And you're not going to potentially kill somebody that way. Because when the fire truck is not there... People die, you imbeciles. And, and what's, what's, this is yeah, one of the guy my dad did also set a dog's ass on fire. That was one time. It was once. And that dog was fine. <laughs> it was just the one dog, the one he was time. He trying to get to a tick. It was just the one time he set the dog on fire. <laughs> just the once. <laughs> I, and he shot the water out. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was okay. <laughs> You know what? This is a case. These there are four guys involved here. Do you know what this is a case of? This is a case of when you start putting, and I'm going to sound sexist as shit here. Well, two of them are clearly related. Well, yeah, but I'm I'm going to sound sexist as shit here. I don't care. When you start slowly adding more and more men to an equation, <laughs> the IQ starts dropping. By it's it's like a curve. How many more and it's it gets exponential. How many more men you add to a situation when one of them comes up, if a guy on his own comes up with a bad idea with no other guys around, he'll probably go, nah, that's a bad idea. If there's two guys there, then you get hold my beer and watch this. I uh, the, the other guy will go, eh, no, we probably shouldn't. And the first guy will go, no. If there's three guys there, the third one will go. That might be kind dude, dude, just think about it. That'd be kind of awesome, wouldn't though, wouldn't it? That'd be awesome though. But that'd be awesome though. You get four guys there and they're calling 911 so they can ride the fire engine. I'm gonna go ahead and not comment on this since the Twitter meninists are already, you know, I can hanging scream me all I want. I ain't give a shit. So that that one's on you. I didn't say shit. I'm, I'm talking from personal man experience. This may apply to women as well. I don't know because I have man experience on this one. I don't have woman experience on this one. Well, I know that's the thing. I've never been in a room full of only men, obviously, because if I was in the room. All I so. know is the when I was a kid and when I even got into college, the more of us imbeciles you got, you add one woman to the equation, all of a sudden we were a whole lot smarter for some damn reason. Dan does say this explains a lot of his time in the military. Bunch of guys in the desert with a shit ton of explosives. See, I cannot, I cannot speak for women. All I know is with guys, we get dumb. <laughs> yes, exactly. Don't, women don't really get together and blow shit up. 
Now that is not to say a lone man cannot have a really stupid bad idea because the guy in our next story was a loner, a lone operator, really bad idea. And boy, did this not go well for him. Ooh, this went bad for him. Door-to-door -door flasher knocks on police chief's home. Door-to-door flasher, is that a thing? Northwestern Pennsylvania man is jailed on charges he was drunk at exposing himself while going door to door harassing his neighbors until he knocked on the interim police chief's door. Is that like, well, I want to say, is that like seamless? And I guess it is. <laughs> Chief Rich. Chief Rich. I mean, it's certainly not like Uber. Chief. Oh, God. Damn it, Tara. <laughs> I guess it might be like Uber. It depends on the flasher. Chief Rich Chappie. Is that a service you can order? Like if I'm home alone, can I just order some dude to come to my door and flash me? Can I do that? Is that an app? Chief Rich Chappie says he encountered 22-year-old Brody Hall when Hall knocked on Chappie's door Sunday and told the chief he was there to, quote, Scare the children. The chief says Hall tried to push past him into the house, but Chopin wrestled Hall to the ground and fucking arrested him. I added the fucking. Online court records do not list an attorney for Hall who has remained in the Erie County Jail on Tuesday. Okay, here's the thing, Brody. Halloween's in October. So if you want to go door to door scaring children, that's the time to do it. You you cut step one. You cut a hole in a bag. Cheesy. Step my... two. You yell trick or treat. Step three. Sex offender registry. Che cheesy Mike in the channel just said prick or treat. Prick or treat. There you go. That was bad. That was fucking awful. I is what the fuck? Okay. Yeah, this goes back to what I think was our first official rule on the show, which was no, no one, one wants, wants to, to see, see your, your dick. penis. Well, yeah, Unless yeah. they specifically request it, you can generally assume that no one wants to see your dick. Nobody. It's it's just they may, but it's the safe assumption they do not wish to. Unless they specifically say, "Why good sir?" I would like to see your dick. Hey, you know, be a little polite about it. Yeah, you know. I've got some sandpaper here. <laughs> God. Oh, Tara. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's bringing it Come back. On. Come, Jesus Christ. But this was definitely wrong fucking door, pal. Yeah. You, you did not know your audience there. Let, let's just say... The police definitely don't want to see your dick. And not only that, let's just say, this is not having... You don't need witness accounts. You don't need someone no. he said, she said. The You flash the cop. They, you go in jail. Yeah. You go to stay. You flash and you tried to force your... And you said you were there to skate. You go in jail. Yeah. D where I also suggest you not go around flashing people. Do, yeah, that's what. Do not show people your penis in prison. It's not going to end well. No. No. And that's not a rape joke. That's actual advice. Like, yeah, don't do not do that. That's, do that. That's a bad plan. Not that I've spent a lot of time in jail, mm. but I'm thinking it's a bad idea. Okay, so it's, it's my time for awkward segues. Uh, well, not segues, but... Tangents, yeah. It's time for an awkward tangent. Um, when I was a kid, I my parents would sometimes go out and do stuff because they were adults and they wanted to have not kid time. So I get left with a babysitter. And my parents trusted my babysitter because she was my, you know, friend. she was the kid of their friends and, you know, they trust her. Which is how, at the age of 10, I found myself at my very first ever live Rocky Horror Picture Show. Huh. 
That explains a lot about you, actually. <laughs> it so does. It so does. However, and you know what? That that even that is kind of forgivable. This is it. Is it? I think it is. <laughs> Maybe the man I am today, Tara. Man I am today. Like I asked my sister's <clears throat> permission before showing my nephew Thor. <laughs> This, on the other hand, not quite as forgivable. Colorado babysitter allegedly took kids to bank robbery. Yeah, no. Colorado woman is accused of taking two children she was babysitting to a bank robbery. 29-year-old Rachel Einspar went through the drive through of a bank in Severance with the two children on a Friday. She allegedly sent a note through the vacuum tube saying there was a man in the car who wanted money and was threatening to hurt her children. So not only, not only did she take kids on to, to a crime, she made them part of the crime. She tried to rob a bank through the fucking drive through She did. By saying there was a gun on her kids. Who were someone else's kids. How she... fucking lazy are millennials, am I right? <laughs> like, back in our day, you had to actually walk into the bank if you wanted to rob it. You couldn't just go to the fucking drive through and be like, Oh, look, I have children in peril. Give me money. You have to work for that jail time. <laughs> this is th yeah. This is this is uh, this is fuck you jail. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is straight up fuck you jail. Because you took the bank robbery and buried it under a couple of layers of endangering a minor. Mm hmm. I'm thinking the parents are going to call that kidnapping because mm -hmm. they certainly did not authorize this little field trip. Mm hmm. You in a lot of trouble. It would be bad enough if it were her kids. That would be pretty bad. But to take somebody else's kids. To take fucking rental kids. To take... Or to get <laughs> rent a tot. Oh, I got a fuck you, Tara. Likewise. <laughs> rent a tot. Actually, I mean, it's not even rental because they were paying you. Yeah. I, I mean, just it. That's no. I know, man. The things people do with children, like they're not dolls. Like, didn't we have the story of the kids that fucking duct taped a kid in the back seat? Yeah. And put a picture on Facebook. It's like this and is like pretended the kid got kidnapped. Yeah. Kids are not toys. Like, I know, I just made a joke about rental kids and that was fucked up. I would never do that. I don't actually think you can rent children because children are human beings and not toys. Like, well, you can. And I, it seems like people forget that, that children are actually little, tiny, small human beings. You can rent them. It's called a children's talent agency. Well, that was dark. Hey, you look at fucking child star list. Where are they now? I'm yeah, just, all right. I'm just fucking saying. I'm just I don't even fucking think saying. Those vultures would be like, oh, you need a kid for a bank robbery? Let me show you some headshots. <laughs> Little Maisie can cry on command. I don't. Uh... Children are little tiny human beings. Yeah. Act accordingly. Do not eat the cables. But they're yummy. You're going you're going to die. I'm going to have to deal with a barbecued cat. Do not chew on the damn cables. My God. He'll be fine. You saw National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That cat was fine. I'm sure Chevy Chase movies are super accurate. So, yeah, the first thing we learned tonight is kids are not accessories. No. No matter what Hollywood actresses who have to adopt one from every country would have you believe. That it's not, it's not, the, the fu fuck you jail, lady. All the jail. All the jail.
We've learned that when you're going door to door committing felonies, you better be goddamn sure which bell you're ringing. You should stick to the shitty neighborhood, probably. Because otherwise your bell gonna get rung. Um, we've learned... It's not the way you want, Flasher. <laughs> Fire engines are not toys! No. Why do... That is a phrase I actually had to say. We need those for important things, like putting out fires. Not so you can run around going, turn the siren on, turn the siren on, woo-woo! What is wrong with you? We've learned you can't just set shit on fire. I'm sorry, Dan. You, you may have not And one of the reasons you can't just set shit on fire is because there's a good chance the firemen are just taking a joyride <laughs> in the fire truck and will not be there when you fuck it up. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Also because it's irresponsible. And dangerous. But it's fun. <laughs> You have That's to, what I'm marrying, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you have to understand, when I say shit's a bad idea, it's a bad idea. And I repeat again that we are sitting on a lot of flammable shit, because I have a lot of nail polish and he has a lot of booze. This is coming from a guy who thought maybe it'd be a great idea to throw a magnesium flare into the into a hotel swimming pool at a convention. Okay. I don't know why that's bad. I mean, wouldn't the water put it out? No. That's oh. not how magnesium... It would, it would, oh. Yeah, it's a bad idea. I don't really... Science. We've learned that... Don't feed the bears. Don't, don't pet the bears. Leave the bears alone. The bears do not want your affection. The bears don't want to be friends. They don't. They want food and a place to sleep, and that's it. Yeah. Maybe a picnic basket. They, 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 they is eat, fuck, poop, sleep. That's it. Leave them the fuck alone. You should not factor into any of those equations. The, the thing about zoos is there's a reason that they keep you separated from the large and deadly animals. Because they're large and deadly and you are squishy and soft. Finally... We've learned tonight that naked plus chimney is no. Just what clothed or not, stay out of the chimney. Stay out of fucking chimneys. Unless you are Santa Claus. And by the way, somebody in the YouTube comments said that it looked like I was marrying Santa's smarter brother. <laughs> He's got white hair and a beard, I guess. Oh, Jesus, Grady. Grady.